we're back here playing more uh, Oracle of Seasons, Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons. Because uh, I uh, didn't get enough of the butt whooping I took the other night. So uh, we're going back here and do this again. my shield. Having a wonderful evening. Uh, I'm not going to be streaming too terribly long tonight. I've uh, got some things I've got to do. I've got family coming into town for some Thanksgiving stuff. Uh, but definitely wanted to get on here and uh, unwind from the day of it. Not that I, this is you know particularly uh, you know stress free or anything. <laughs> They couldn't touch me. Tonight, they're hitting me all over the place. Thank <laughs> you. 
Angel, welcome to the chat. How are you doing tonight? It's not the end of the world. At least now, if I, like I said, if I die. I'm gonna try something. For some reason, the chat box isn't coming up on my screen correctly, and I don't know why. settings again. I can see the messages, you guys just, you guys just can't. Think about it. I think Breath of the Wild was the first Zelda game that um, allowed jumping without the use of an item. No, I take that back. The second Legend of Zelda 2 uh, Link's Awake um, Adventure of Link had you could jump, but that was a that was a side scroller, so I don't know if that really counts. That wasn't a great game to begin with. Don't know what I'm supposed to do with that.
this looks like a barrel of no fun. Tonight is the release of uh, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Unless you are in Japan, in which case you already have access to it. Which I think is totally unfair. I feel like it should. Like, the release date should be the same regardless of where you are. Just because that game is fair, like, prevents the spoilers. You know? I think more than that, like, the gaming news lately that I've been kind of stoked about has come in the form of um, a remake of Star Wars Knights of the Republic, which is probably, I mean, I did it here on this channel, um, I did a complete dark side video of it, and it's by far, like, my favorite all-time Star Wars game, and not only are they remaking it, they're bringing back all of the original voice cast. The only thing I, I am kind of bitter about is that it is a PlayStation exclusive release, uh, and I don't have a PS5. <laughs> um, so it's, that's the only part of it that I'm like a little, I guess, really irritated that, is that. But at the same time, when it was originally released, it was it was an Xbox only title. So, I, I can only be so mad that PlayStation got the contract this time, but I just, I think it's going to be great because I feel like, I feel like if Jennifer Hale and everyone else that was responsible for being a part of the first game's voice acting, and even the faces, they even used the, the voice actors' faces for it, um, I, I really think they'll do it justice. I'd like to see some DLCs thrown in. I'd like to see the, some more side quest stuff thrown in, maybe. 
Um... Does anybody out there have any uh, gaming requests that they're uh, looking forward to? Anything new that's uh, not a gaming request, but... Hey, Dadunnan! Good to see you again. Welcome back. Those of you who don't know, Dadunnan is a fellow uh, Oracle runner. He, uh, Dadunnan runs uh, Oracle, uh, what'd you say you ran the other night? You just finished running Oracle of Ages? Doing Oracle of Seasons. Ah! I'm gonna try and go back this way. I'm gonna make sure it's a backtrack here. Myself now wondering though, is with the announcement of Sora as the latest Smash Brothers character and the, the last Smash Brothers character that they're gonna do, uh, I wonder if, if we're going to see the end of Super Smash Brothers as a franchise or if they're gonna keep trying to just keep reviving it the way that Mortal Kombat's still trying to stay alive. Um, Like there's some games they can do that infinitely. Like Mario Kart, they can they can they can keep Mario Kart alive and relevant forever. Because you can always make new courses, you can always make new challenges. There's a lot of there's a lot of Nintendo properties and characters they can introduce, you know? We don't have Samus on a on a motorbike yet. You know, there's there's things they can do. And still introduce, you know, Nintendo properties into So, but I, I think we, what they got like 60 some now characters for Smash, and it's like I don't know. I just wonder if that's one of those that's gonna go away. Cause I, I have the original Super Smash Brothers on Nintendo uh, 64. It's a great game. I love that game. I remember I got it the Christmas it came out of my grandparents got it for me. And uh, tons of fun. You know, Pikachu was my boy for a long time until I got really good with Star Fox. And, uh... I don't know. I just... I'm glad that, like, it's it's been so popular. Because you see, if you watch, like, people who are really passionate about the game, uh, when they were announcing, like, the characters and stuff, people were losing their minds, because it's still a, a loved game. Oh, I got lucky. Barely made that.
to go off of here. Ocarina of Time is great. This is an Ocarina of Time. <laughs> I thought about doing Ocarina of Time. No, I... I'm good. I think I know what I'm going to do. And honestly, I'm not even playing this to, like, be completionist. I'm mostly just doing this because... I just went out of mind today. Is that better? Because I'm normal volume. Let me know if that fixes the issue. Okay, good. Ugh. Really? I hit him with the pot and it knocks him into me. Yeah, the graphics are really... It, because they were they didn't change the graphic style, all they did was put it in color for uh, Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages uh, compared to Link's Awakening. Uh, but they were all Game Boy games. And so they just kept the same... Uh, the, the same aesthetic. You can't, if you have it, yeah, they, they did make them color exclusive until the Nintendo 3DS. You can get them on the, uh, the Nintendo Virtual, the, uh, Nintendo Store for... I think I know what I need to do. I'm gonna try something. There's one. Seasons is a remake of Zelda 1 on NES with... Um... There are similarities, certainly, between them, especially if you look at, like, the first dungeon and the second dungeon as far as... I don't know about remake being the case, but there's definitely similarities. I feel like it more just paid homage to the first game than it did so much go the um, remake route. But that's me. There was supposed to be a third game, and I think it was near the end of like the Game Boy Color life cycle. So it just never happened. Ah, oh, man. Ah. 
and sometimes that happens. You know, there's some games that come out at the end of a console's life cycle, and it ends up being, um, it ends up being like, like you wish they had. It ends up being like a really great game that came out right at the time they were like they're introducing a new console so you never get like a true sequel to the game or anything like that I'm trying to think offhand what it was you're writing a book that's paying homage to star wars space conflict a new hope <laughs> What's pretty wild is there's a graphic novel series of Lucas's first ideas of what he wanted um, Star Wars to be. And um, it's really interesting. And actually, it's it's what we got is better, but it's interesting to see where like the ideas came from for the different characters and what they were originally. Uh, it's a very, very different story. Um, I've got, I think, the first, s s yeah, with Star Killer. I think I've got the first six or seven of them that were done. I've got, I've got a, quite a few of the original ones. That, well, I shouldn't say original. I've got quite a few of the ones that were released in that storyline, but I don't think I have all of them. Um, I got out of, I got, I wasn't living near a comic book store for a while, and I just never ended up getting the rest of them. Time and development issues. Hmm. These are games that I would love to see get the Link's Awakening Nintendo Switch treatment. You know, where we've got the updated graphics, we've got the improved sound, the gameplay's all, you know, greatly improved. I'd love to see that, honestly. Um... I think they deserve it, quite frankly. Get the exact same development team, get the exact same um, everything that you had for the remake of Link's Awakening, and just go that route. Why not? Finally! Get that fairy, too. At last, I have done it. That takes me to the boss room. So now I just need the boss key. But we're on the right track, at least. Slowly but surely, this has been like the hardest dungeon so far. And I don't understand why. <laughs> Okay, I'm just dealing with one of these. Right, that's not the end of the world. Oh, well, that's a problem. can make a hard I believe you could medic I believe you could make a harder dungeon
I don't know if you heard, Medic, the next uh, D&D game for GNN is going to be uh, December 23rd. Uh, and it is going to be a charity for St. Jude Children's Hospital. I guess this would be a good time as any to, to plug that that whole dealio. Um, so, yeah, happening uh, in uh, just a few weeks. Uh, we have the next uh, Geek News Now Dungeon Guild D&D uh, &D game. Um, raising money for St. Jude... Uh, St. Jude's for St. Jude Children's Hospital. I'll get it right here in a sec. Um, we did Operation Supply Drop for our game in October. It was a huge success. Um, we had our friends over at Metallic Dice Games. They donated some dice as a raffle. Uh, it was very, very exciting to uh, have them on board and, and to be a part of it all, and they were awesome. Um, This time I've got the warp point to put me right there. That's at least somewhat useful. <laughs> I'm not going to be doing a real long stream tonight, honestly. I don't. I'll probably get to. I'll probably get to the next dungeon, but I probably won't beat it tonight. I'll just get to it, and uh, and then probably call my stream for the evening. Um, I have family coming in actually tonight, later tonight, uh, for Thanksgiving holidays. So I'm gonna. They're staying with me, so I need to finish getting my place ready. And uh, uh... no, 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 no. Uh, I think there is a moth-like boss in Zelda 1. I don't remember, honestly. It has been a very, very long time. Uh, and a lot, a lot of people know this. There's actually a way, uh, if you know, because, uh, it's hidden. Um, you can actually go straight to the final level in Zelda 1. You can just go straight to the last dungeon and fight Ganon. Um you will get absolutely spanked because you will have no health. You'll have you'll have three health, three hearts. Um, and it will it will it will be a terrible time for you. But um, come on. No! Man. If I can just stay up there. Come on. Well, at least when he knocks me down and I go back up there, I've got a chance to kill his kids and get more hearts. Let's, let's call it what it is. That's what's happening. <laughs> I kind of wish, like, this game had the same glitch that Ocarina of Time does. Um, 
the Deku Sticks in Ocarina of Time. Uh, if you hit an enemy with a Deku Stick, uh, which, you know, they're, nobody ever thinks about them. Most people never even use them beyond, like, when you need to, like, set them on fire. But the Deku Sticks actually do the exact same amount of damage as the Jump Sword Slash. So they do a sec effectively one regular hit with the Deku Stick does uh, double sword damage. And you can use them to beat bosses pretty quickly. There is the infinite sword glitch, um, but even without the infinite sword glitch, if you just hit an enemy with a Deku Stick, granted it will break, but if you do hit it, you will you will automatically do the same damage as a jump attack uh, with your sword. And it's just, I don't know why that's in there. I don't know if that was a mistake during programming or what that was. But it is a uh, useful little thing. There we go. Yay! I have never managed to get Infinite Sword Glitch. Um, I, my timing has always been just off. And for those of you who don't know, Infinite Sword Glitch is... You swing your sword and put it away on the same frame. And the game thinks that from that moment on, your sword is constantly out and it's in a swinging state. So even though the sword is technically put away or you're holding a different item, you can run into things. And as long as you're within the same proximity you would be with your sword, you'll just keep doing damage. Just nonstop. Even though you're not actually swinging your sword. Your next one shot, you're going to run... Vampire Masquerade, nice. You'll have to let me know how it goes. There's a way to manipulate RNG to get a monster launch. To get a monster launch is attacking a special block with a bomb explosion. Oh, the mega jump. Yeah, you actually don't have to have it with a monster attack. You can do it off of just a um, bomb explosion. Um, they call it bomb jump, but it is um, is it is absolutely frame perfect. Yeah, I love watching um, I love watching Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask Speedrunners because just the, the what they managed to pull off is absolutely insane. And I think the craziest speedrun I ever saw of Ocarina of Time, I think it was it was in the glitch category, uh, any percent glitch category, and they um, they beat it in. I think seven minutes because what they discovered they actually beat Ganondorf and Ganon at the end as young Link which is not supposed to be possible you're supposed to be adult Link when you go into that fight but they discovered a um, glitch in the beginning Lost Woods or when, you, when you're in the Kokiri Forest where um, Um, they discovered the glitch and what happens essentially is that um, you um, sorry I'm getting distracted doing this um, you glitch through where Milo is blocking your way and I don't know why I did that uh, where he's blocking your way to get to the Deku Tree. So before you, like, once you have the sword and shield, um, 
you glitch through where he's at and you fall through the floor and you land on the top of Ganon's castle. Because the way the levels are stacked in the, the builder of the game, um, Kokiri Forest is on top, is built on top of, um, Ganon's castle at the end. Speed running around ages 80% they need the shield to be pushed by. Oh, you're t yeah, you're talking about, um, I know the glitch you're talking about. Yeah, that, that's specifically for the Game Boy ones. I was thinking you were talking about, um, the one for Ocarina of Time. Because that's the speedrun I'm most familiar with. Um, that, I watch that, I watch way too many of those. Like, games done quick is my weakness. Okay, that's not cool. I'm not a speedrunner, and yet I have dreams of performing at GDQ someday. I don't even know what I would speedrun. There's there's some games that I could I could probably do it. Um, let's see. If you weren't a gamer of 64, you began with the NES, and your first console was GameCube. Right on. Hey man, we all started somewhere. Um, I had an NES growing up. And then I never had a Super Nintendo or a Sega Genesis. My next console that I had after that was a Nintendo 64. Um, and I still have that original 64 sitting to my right, right now. Um, it's that same 64. I've given it a Legend of Zelda paint job. Um, custom paint job. But it's, uh... Yeah, it's... My precious. Um, I love that thing, and it's it's been taken apart and cleaned and put back together a few times just to keep it keep it running. Um, I did have a Game Boy Pocket in between those two, though, uh, because I got a Game Boy Pocket and Pokemon Blue at the same time. Great Marvel's run almost get by alive. Pay your toll. Yeah, because I gotta throw his bombs back at him, I believe. I think. No? Maybe not. Game Boy Advance and a DS, a 3DS. I've since gone back and reacquired uh, a bunch of stuff that I didn't have. Um, like now I have a, um, actually I'll show it to you. I was really on the fence about these when they came out, but, um, this is the Retron 3. Uh, they've now got, I think, like the Retron 5 or the Retron 7. But this is the Retron 3. Um, you've got... Um, yeah, uh, Super Nintendo, uh, Sega Genesis, and uh, regular Nintendo. Um, takes the original cartridges. And the, these come with, like, the crappiest controllers in the world. They're IR controllers, so... What that means, like, the controller we're used to for, like, modern consoles are Bluetooth. So it doesn't matter how you have it tilted or turned. Um, but an infrared controller, you have to have it point... You have to have the end of the controller pointed at the console, even though it's wireless, in order for it to work. And so if you're playing... 
and you tilt your hands up, suddenly it stops reading your input. But that's not a big deal because these have original controller ports on them for each one. So I just went on Amazon and I spent 10 bucks for some replicated controllers and Bob's your uncle. But yeah, this is a, this is a beast and they feel really cheap with how they're built. They feel like, you know, really cheap plastic, but it's actually pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, and I know like, I think like the Retron 5 will take uh, Game Boy cartridges up through, I think Game Boy Advance cartridges. Um, I think there's a Retron 7 that's out, but they stopped, they stopped making them at some point. I don't know why, but they're pretty cool. So if you're like me and you have a, get a bunch, you get a bunch of, you know, classic retro games, um, you know, I like, yes, I can emulate pretty much everything. This is emulated right now, but, um... There's still something really nice about playing it on an original controller and playing it on uh, the original cartridge. The only other thing I'll tell people is, is that if you're going to get into playing on original cartridges, um, if it is truly an original cartridge, uh, be prepared to replace the battery inside. And it's just the flat, what, 2032D cell flat, like, watch style batteries. Like the big flat ones, the, the coin ones, um, because those have a, a shelf life of like 20 years. So we're well past that for any classic, you know, Super Nintendo, regular Nintendo game. And all those do, like the game will work fine, but the save function won't. Those little batteries are the reason the save function worked on the the cartridge's motherboard. Um, So that's, that's my recommendation is be prepared, like get, and you can buy, cause like Nintendo has their own screwdrivers for their stuff, but you can get them on Amazon really cheap. I have a couple sets, um, but, and, but like Genesis, Sega Genesis carts, uh, like Sega Genesis carts, because I don't, I can't think of a single Sega Genesis game that actually has a save file. None of them have a save function. They were all designed to be, like, arcade cartridge-style games. So none of them have save functionality. I can't think of a single one that lets you... I take that back. I take that back. Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic does. So any game that lets you do that, um, you're going to have to replace the battery on, including Game Boy games, if you have an original cartridge. Now, if you get a reproduction or you get one that's been refurbished, there's a good chance that battery's already been replaced. But I, I found that out the hard way because I started getting back into collecting games I didn't have. I never had, never played. And so I got I got, I have got a cartridge of the original Super Mario World. And um, I was, I remember I was so excited, popped it in, everything turned on, it played great. I'm playing, playing, playing. I was playing for like two hours. I'm telling it to save, it's telling me it's saved, and I'm going on, and then I walk away from it. I come back the next day, turn it on, and play some more, and my save file is gone. I did some research, and that's when I learned that those D cell batteries and those old carts go bad. Um, hey, we got Dimitri. We have a dinosaur. And if you're going to go Game Boy Advance games, I highly recommend, I mean, go Pokemon games, you know, are classics. Um, Castlevania games, Fire Emblem, uh, any of the Final Fantasy ones. Yeah. Final Fantasy put out some really good mobile games. Well, I say mobile, handheld, I should say handheld games. They put out some really solid handheld games. Um, Tactics is a lot of fun. Uh, Dawn of Souls is a lot of fun. I, I thoroughly enjoy both of those personally. Oh, 
have no idea what I'm doing. Apparently that did nothing. See, I skipped, I went from Game Boy Pocket to Game Boy Color, and then I didn't get another handheld console until I got my 3DS. Um, and now that Nintendo no longer supports, like, there's no more updates or anything for a 3DS, um... I have hacked and modded my 3DS to Kingdom Come, to where my Nintendo 3DS plays uh, Sega Genesis ROMs. Um, so let's try to bring more. Hang on. Next cave, open all four eyes in a single stroke. Okay. Oh, I see what I gotta do. I really wish I had a way to, like, screen share my 3DS, because otherwise I would do, like, an entire stream showing people how to, like, mod their 3DS. But it's the same process to do, um... It's the same process you do when you're modding, like, the Wii U. Um... Which, I also modded my Wii U. I have a 2 terabyte hard drive on my Wii U. And, uh... It is just loaded with every game for the Wii Wii U that I ever wanted. As well as, like, I did a bunch of the virtual console stuff, so there's a bunch of, like, classic Nintendo games on there as well. And... If the Nintendo ever stops their support of the Switch, I'll do the same thing. But see, Nintendo's really smart. You have to wait until they stop doing updates for their systems because their updates look for pirated software. That's basically what you're doing. You're hacking the software. And they're out, like the updates they send out are looking for that. Um, and if they find it, they will brick your console. And it will not work. So you have to be, you know, you want the last update done before you start putting all of the stuff on it. Yay, now I can swim places. Did the same for your 3DS, you disappointed with the RPG. Which RPG? I'm confused. Are you talking about the Final Fantasy one? If we're talking about Final Fantasy Tactics, that, it isn't for everybody, but I really enjoyed it, because what, what, what was funny about Tactics to me is that, um, it's self-aware that it's a Final Fantasy game, because these kids find this book talking about Final, these kids in the real world find this book talking about Final Fantasy, and, um, They're, you know, they get sucked into the world and everything as part of, you know, their imagination and everything. And to me, it's just really charming and really funny. Um, I thoroughly enjoy it. Sakit. <laughs> but I'm also I like things that like 
when you take a franchise that's as serious and popular as Final Fantasy and then you suddenly make it self-aware um, is just really funny to me because it was made self-aware completely seriously. Like, it actually has a serious plot to it. It has character development to it, and it's self-aware that Final Fantasy isn't real. It's just a... It's in a book, and they get sucked into the book. Um... And I think that's, like, the most amazing plot twist of it. Alright guys, I'm going to save, and I think I'm going to finish up for tonight. I only went about an hour, but I want to appreciate everybody who... You guys, you know, Dadunin and, and Medic and guys if, and Wolf Angel for being on the stream. Um, if you guys haven't followed our channel, you'd help us out a lot. Help me help me and Wolf Angel, and we've got we've got two new streamers that we're in the process of getting them up and running as well uh, on here. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe. Find us on all of our social media content, uh, geeknewsnow.net, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, uh, and of course right here on Twitch at GNN underscore gaming. Uh, if you are an Amazon Prime member and you're not already using your Amazon Prime subscription on Twitch, you can subscribe to any uh, one Twitch channel per month for free using your Amazon Prime um, MySpace. <laughs> All right, guys, I want to thank everybody for being on my stream. Uh, you can subscribe to us for free using your Amazon Prime subscription uh, if you have it. And uh, if not, uh, do it because there's fun stuff to watch on Amazon Prime as well. So uh, thanks, everybody. Take care. I will see you guys. What's today? Uh, let's see. Sunday night, I believe uh, I'm going to be on Wolf Angel stream as we do Sea of Thieves. And uh, we'll, I will be back next Tuesday. Uh, to stream some more. So you guys take care. I will see you guys. Uh, have a good night.